Hey guys, how you doing today? On my way home from the grocery store, just finished work. Uh, heading on home. See, the beard's coming back. What I tell you guys, beard's coming back. I gotta do something about like that beard. It gets it gets so big and then like it gets itchy. It gets itchy and, I, and it doesn't matter what I do. It just seems like there's a moment where it's like I gotta get this beard off or it's just gonna kill me. But there are people with big giant beards who, you know, must do things to keep it from happening that way. I don't know. I'm like a perpetually itchy, itchy sort of person. <laughs> uh, so what's been itching on the inside of my brain? Um, I think I want this video to be a longer video. I'm not going to bother shortening it for Instagram or anything like this. So a couple of people have been commenting about how they miss the older, longer videos. Uh, and I went back and took a look at some of the optics and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I, I, there's a good percentage of people who are watching the longer ones. So I think I'll make this a longer one and talk about... Um, t t today I want to talk about money. That's what I want this video to be about, money. Because so much of our politics and so much of what we do and so much of how we act in the world is based on money. And money is this illusionary thing that we created. It's, uh, there's a word for it, of course, that I completely forget, but it's like an ergog or something like this. It's, it's, it, its value is dependent on completely on uh, the people that are using it. That if we all just decided as a people that money had no value, that it didn't matter, it was unimportant, we would stop using it. Truck! We would stop using it. If we just all decided that money had no value, if we just stopped accepting it, if, it, if you couldn't buy anything with it, if you couldn't take it and, tr and change it into something meaningful into a good or a service that actually mattered uh it would have no value whatsoever um i do think that complex societies will always create money there will always be money uh we we know that or the going theory is that money was around before writing was around that the earliest forms of writing that we actually have access to are people writing down money, uh, which means that money was circulating first, right? That we had a sense of credit. There was some sort of sense that, well, a chicken is worth this amount, and then a cow is worth this amount, and so we have some kind of common valuation system. Uh, Western economics has tied this this idea. It's like the one thing that neoliberal economics actually still gets right, which is supply and demand, right? That, well, if there's not a lot of something, but a lot of people want it, then it should have a high value. Uh, and that those are the conditions for what establishes value. But it has nothing to do with money. And one of the things that really blew me away when I... Like, if you go on YouTube and you search economics courses, you're going to find economics courses that are taught by Oxford, Harvard, Berkeley, just a bunch of, of economics classes for free on the internet uh, that you can take. And I've taken them all. I've, ta I've watched all of these. And the thing that blew me away uh, is that none of these guys actually talk about what money is, what it does how it functions, who's responsible for its creation, who's responsible for maintaining its value, right? And it's because neoliberals can't actually have that discussion. Because to have that discussion means talking about the government and its, and its purpose. Uh, neoliberal economics and economists uh, never want people to understand that the government is important, that the government does an important, has an important function, that the government does things that are important. Uh, they want, they want people to believe that the only way to structure a society is through, uh, capitalist businesses, which I've, can't be clearer, is completely fraudulent. Uh, it's a total farce and it's a total lie. Like, 
like telling people the only way to juggle is to take the balls and throw them in the garbage can. Like, what are you talking? They've got this completely inverted. Anyway, I don't care to talk about neoliberalism, except to point out that neoliberal e economists cannot actually talk about money, uh, what it does, how it functions, what its value is in society, why we use it, and more importantly, who's responsible for taking care of the money supply. Because once you actually begin to talk about what money is, and then who's responsible for actually wielding it in meaningful ways, uh, you actually have to start talking about the government and why you need to have a government, and why it's important to have a strong, relied-upon government uh, in order to maintain uh, control of the money. Because money is not a thing. It's just printed. We literally print it. It's, it's literally tied to nothing. Uh, if you wanted to have a trillion extra dollars in your money supply today, you could just type it into a screen and you would have it. The United States did this recently. They literally printed in a single day $5 trillion, which they then handed to uh, corporate power, uh, who just jammed it in their offshore accounts and did nothing with it. It certainly didn't help their economy. Uh, unless you think, you know three or four billionaires is the economy, which is exactly what they say. What, like, when we say the economy, what we really are talking about is the wealth of, like, five billion people, or, sorry, five people, five billionaires. The, uh, but money itself is just, it's not really a thing. The, you, you literally can just print it and direct it at where it need at where you need it to go, right? You, you, there's, uh, uh, people like Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, right? Presidents of the Federal Reserve System in the United States have stated as much. They've stated it outright that like, yeah, if we say that we can put $5 trillion towards a project, we just have that money. We will have that money. That's not a problem. Uh, the, the, pro uh, the problem is creating the proper incentives to get projects and jobs done, right? That what create, what is actually valuable in the society is things happening, right? If we create a, uh, a high speed rail system, well, that's extremely valuable. That creates an enormous amount of value for the society, regardless of how much money it costs or how much money it costs to maintain or any of this kind of stuff, because these numbers are completely illusionary. The only people who want you to think otherwise are, are these people who want to convince you that money is a closed, tight system, right? That money begins with businesses, right? The businesses are the ones that are generating money. It's these people who want you to believe that, well, you work, like I pay you a wage, and then you use that money to get what you want, right? So I'm the job creator and I'm important because I'm the one that's withholding the currency from you. I'm the worthless middleman, right? And the justification is that, oh, well, because I'm withholding that currency, I can dictate to you what is or is not valuable labor, right? And of course, I'm able to dictate that, and I should be able to dictate that, because I'm rich, and if, if you're rich, that makes you a better person in this society, straight up. The, uh, uh, so, they don't, and they want to maintain the, the closed system of that, right? They want the government to give money to businesses, so the businesses can withhold money, in exchange for your labor and maintain the wage slave system, right? Which is exactly what it is. It's a wage slave system. The, uh, like back in the era of Lincoln, when Lincoln was freeing the slaves, right? He was freeing the purchased and bought for slaves. But the Republican party of that day, Lincoln's Republican party, acknowledged fully that uh, there isn't much difference between uh, selling someone and renting someone. And that's what wages are. You're, you're renting a person, right? And in fact, the, uh, 
The Confederates actually argued that wage slavery was worse than chattel slavery, right? Because a chattel slave, uh, if you don't have any labor for the chattel slave to do, you still have to take care of them, right? You still have to house and food, feed them and clothe them. You can't just throw them out. But you can for a wage slave. If there's no labor for them to do, you just lay them off. You fire them. You get rid of them, right? And so the, uh, the Confederates actually argued that chattel slavery was a uh, more humane form of slavery uh, than what we're doing now, which is wage slavery. And the, and so what we're doing by, like when, in the midst of this pandemic, why conservatives and liberals need to pound on the pulpit and say, no, we've, you can't pass a CERB, right? You can't empower workers. You can't empower individuals, even though their whole thing is about individualism anyway, but you can't empower workers. You can't empower individuals. You have to get, put that money into business. The businesses are the ones that need to withhold the capital from the working class in order to exchange it for their labor in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, well, we could very easily just give that money, like literally just create money out of nothing because that's how we do it. That's what money is and give it to who needs it. Now, the one and only danger that exists, right, for, for money, uh, and money and printing money is that you do need to be aware of uh, inflation and of uh, devaluing your currency, right? Like, let's say you have an economy that's $100, okay? If you print one more dollar, right, that's not going to devalue the currency very much, right? Uh, and maybe you need to print that one extra dollar. Like, so you create, uh, you, it's, you're not creating inflation of 1%, obviously, but you are devaluing your currency by a certain amount. So, uh, instead of somebody like what used to take a dollar to buy now we'll take a dollar and one penny to, to buy. Right. So you're devaluing the currency in a very minor sort of way. But maybe if you give that dollar to someone who doesn't have a dollar, right? If you have a hundred people in a hundred, <laughs> okay, okay. If you have a hundred people in a hundred dollar economy, okay, and everybody has one dollar, except one person who has zero dollars, right? They either have to sell themselves to one of the people who have a dollar in order to get any amount of money to in interact with the economy, or you can print an extra dollar and give them a dollar. You devalue the currency by an eensy, eensy, eensy little bit, but that individual is now integrated in the overall economy. And because uh, you had 100 people in a $100 economy, uh, except this one extra person, so you had 101 people in a $100 economy, right? <laughs> so now you have 101 people in a $101 economy. So it doesn't wreck your economy. It doesn't wreck your currency, right? Now, same exact example, though. Uh, let's say you have 100 people in a $100 economy, and then suddenly you print 100 extra dollars, okay? So you've devalued your currency by 100%. <laughs> it used to cost a dollar to buy something. Now it costs $2 to buy something, right? So that's a major devaluation of the currency. And that's the type of inflation that people are deeply concerned about and should be don't get me wrong like you can't just print money you need to find other forms of money that are worthless and inert in your system that don't do anything so let's say you have i don't know uh someone who doesn't pay taxes but has 600 billion dollars okay that's worthless they're completely worthless they're not putting any money into the economy they're literally hoarding it off to the side uh, and they're keeping it for themselves. That's completely worthless. Like, it's completely without value, and it shouldn't be done. Uh, and that's how you devalue a currency, by the way. You hoard the money, and you keep it in offshore accounts so that no one else can have access to it. And if no one else can have access to the currency, when the entire point of a currency is to use it as a medium of trade, and uh, but no one else has access to it, and no one else can use it, then the currency is worthless. Nobody has it. Nobody can use it. It doesn't, it doesn't achieve anything, right? Uh, and that's the reason why places, uh, the West in general, is being thrown into total chaos is because you have a small group of people who have tons of wealth that they can never use and have no reason to have uh, and a, an increasingly uh, large group of people who don't have access to the wealth that they need in order to just buy the bare necessities, food and shelter, right? 
but we haven't yet transitioned into a point where people are willing to give food and shelter for for no money right that they're still commodifying these things these things are still considered commodities in our culture uh and nor are we willing to provide the money in order for them just to secure it and so we're basically just saying to people fuck off and die and we're doing it so that billionaires can just sit on money we printed in the first place uh and so we're caught in a game right we're caught in a game the government could very easily just say well game's over strip the wealth that is sitting meaninglessly doing nothing right like here's a thing that we could literally do it would take a day uh it would be like the capitalists would consider it a problem so i consider it something valid that we should definitely think about doing we could recall the entire money supply just literally call recall the entire money supply and then redistribute the money back into the society and we could do that annually we could do that every five years six years if you wanted uh, but we could do it annually if we if we wanted to just basically pull in all the money uh, and then redistribute it back out into the society and money has a way of pooling worthlessly right like it it's uh which is why you need to have a centralized government who exists explicitly to get rid of pooled money and pooled debt right that uh stuff like student loan debt like student loan debt should simply not exist it's pointless it serves no one it's it does nothing it just acts as an anchor around the neck of the person who has it and the person who originally lent the money doesn't actually get their money back really like it's 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 a really shitty investment in from a business perspective it's horrible for the society like it's absolutely horrible for the society uh it creates a lot of animosity in the society that does not need to exist uh and literally we could just say no more student debt it just doesn't exist it's not a thing uh and just create the money we need to educate our people and it's done it's over right and we can do that over and over again right like we can just create the money we need for a basic income and create the system of a basic income and fund it perpetually and forever and it just will be funded and will be there forever ad nauseum right uh and the only concern that we have is that there's some billionaires who are holding on to huge sums of wealth for no reason uh and the billionaire class cannot talk this way it cannot imagine the world this way because billionaires need to believe that they're important when they're worthless right they need to believe that that uh what they have done has validity what it has no validity whatsoever right that the billionaires need to continue conning people into believing that they should be more powerful than your elected government officials right imagine believing that that's the case as the billionaires obviously do that the free market should decide it shouldn't be your elected individual it shouldn't be elected people who are put into power through the voting of citizens that shouldn't be the people who have power and authority in the society the people who should have power and authority in the society are the people who can buy the market right which is exactly what the billionaire class has done they've bought the market uh like if you genuinely believe that the market is free you're illiterate and ignorant and i'll say that straight to your face if you have the audacity to tell me that the market is free you're an illiterate illiterate stooge like straight up you you need to start reading some books bud like you need to start looking into what's going on around you because the billionaires have bought the market they own the market because we've let them because we have treated money as if it is actually a thing it is as if it is an actual commodity right so we have even commodified money when what money is and i know it's taken me almost 20 minutes to get to this <laughs> sorry about that what money is is it is a tool period you could call it a technology if you wanted but it's a technology in so far as like writing as a technology right it is a tool that is all it is it is a tool and if you you can use it humans can use it for good humans can use it for evil we're clearly choosing to use it for evil now because we could very easily eliminate homelessness eliminate food insecurity uh eliminate uh uh all of these sort of poverty solutions and things like this we could do that in a very short period of time it would be shockingly short 
I'm talking about literally like you would go from uh, uh, people living in tent cities, uh, uh, in, in homeless little areas, uh, l scouring the streets for beer cans so that they can sell them, to that being over. And it would happen in an incredibly short amount of time. Like, we can 100% do that. The government could literally print the money, give it to those people, that would be the end of the story. Uh, uh, and and this the, the all the neoliberal economists who are frauds can do is abandon economics and start talking about morality, right? Because they're not actual economists, because they they're, they themselves are quite illiterate. They don't read things like Marx. They don't read things. They don't read critiques of capitalism, right? They just live in their own insular little bubble and teach from that position. Uh, and then once their insular little bubble pops uh, and their systems, which are based on nothing, completely collapse, well, then they don't know what to do because they're illiterate and they haven't even begun to uh, gain the literacy. And I'm, I have no problem saying that. The economists at Harvard are economically illiterate. I have no problem saying that. I've seen what they're teaching. I know what they're teaching. They're illiterate. They need to actually read something outside of these like jerk off manuals that they've written for themselves. Uh, uh, they're not they're not actually interested in knowing what's going on. They're interested in maintaining power for themselves, and they're interested in arguing to convince you to keep letting their billionaire friends have the money, uh, and have control of the money supply. When that's a hundred percent something that is in the the, the, the the power of government, which is why they are working so hard to undercut the government and undercut, oh yeah, the government can't do anything except send men to, moon, to the moon, you know? Ah, uh, the government can't do anything except maintain the largest military force on the planet. You know, like, the, the, these, these, these inconsistencies that exist in their ideology because they don't want you to understand that in the space of a day, they could be worthless, completely stripped from the society, of no value to anyone, and every citizen could have the money they needed to uh, ha secure food and shelter for themselves on a permanent basis. We could do that very quickly. It would not take a lot of time. <laughs> like, this, th this is why I get so angry about this, is that there are legitimate problems that we are looking at. Wage slavery is a legitimate problem that we are staring at the face, in the face of. Uh, and there are very straightforward solutions that would take... Uh, that would improve the society instantaneously. But it requires the society understanding that money isn't a thing. Like, when people say, how are you going to pay for that? They've completely bought into the capitalist ideology, right? That uh, uh, they have pretended that money is scarce, when money is not scarce. <laughs> money is, is abundant. There is nothing more abundant than money. We can create infinite sums of money. Uh, how are you going to pay for that? what the fuck are you even talking about? We're going to print the money and we're going to hand it to the people who need it. And if that creates an inflationary problem because we need to adjust the society in major ways, then we're going to find the dead inert money of which there is plenty and eliminate it. There you go. Like this, this is it. And it's not a tough computation to make, right? You just need to finally accept that the neoliberal economists are illiterate, stupid and delusional and lying to you, right? That they want something. They're incentivized to tell you lies about how the economy actually works. Uh, because if, if people don't actually have the medium of trade to trade with, within one another, money is without value, which I've already said, so I don't need to rehash that. We treat money as if it has moral power, right? And that's because the capitalists do see themselves as, uh, as, as religious figures, right? They don't respect religious figures like the Pope or anything like this. They don't respect, uh, Martin Luther King. They don't respect any of these, these sort of religious figures who have popped up in our culture. They don't respect Jesus Christ for sure. They don't, uh, uh, what they respect is money. And they, if, if you have accumulated money, then you are a holy person. And that is the case. Uh, whether or not... And it doesn't matter how you got that money. It doesn't matter what you did to, to secure it. Uh, if you have a lot of money, you are holy. Uh, and if you have no money, it means you're evil. 
And because they have, uh, they don't treat money for what it is, which is a tool that a government can use however it would like, uh, and a government uh, is elected by the citizenry and answers ultimately to the citizenry, right, a, that, that the government needs to be attacked in a religious war, right? It, it's a culture war. It's an assault against the institutions themselves on, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a hearts and mind kind of way, right? As they have done. Because uh, if the capitalists lose control of the money supply, the game is up for them. It's over. And if the uh, uh, if elected officials and if people start to organize in a way to uh, uh, eliminate the capitalists from the system, the surefire way to do it is just to eliminate them, f eliminate their control of the money supply. That's exactly how I would do it. It would take a week at most. The capitalists would scream about it and then they would be irrelevant because they wouldn't control anything anymore. Because they wouldn't have any, they wouldn't have hundreds of billions of dollars at their disposal to waste on deluding the populace into believing lies, right? So, yeah, okay, I gotta close this video down or I might not be able to upload it. Uh, I hope you guys are all doing well out there. Like, share, subscribe. Money isn't real. It's not real. It's a tool, right? It's just, it's, it's an idea that we use to facilitate trade with one another. Uh, and if we don't use it as a tool and instead treat it like it's a holy relic, like saying idiotic things like, well, he earned it. Like, no, you, no, you didn't. Money is printed. It, it, it exists at the behest of the, of the government itself. You didn't earn it. You just have it. You just collected it. Right. This is, this is like, this is like, uh, 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 what 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 we're literally doing in this society is we are uh, uh, surrounding people with police forces, right, uh, and not allowing them to go pick up apples that grow freely on trees, uh, and then allowing some people to come pick apples uh, uh, so that they can get a wage from the people who say they own the apples. But the apples grow freely in the world. You're not earning those apples. You're withholding those apples. They didn't earn that money. They're withholding that money, right? That's what's happening. And to believe otherwise, I think at this point, is just infuriatingly delusional. People, people, people are saying the society uh, uh, is more divided now than it's ever been. And I'm like, yeah, because half the society thinks that reality doesn't exist. They, they think magic is real right? And they think money is magic. <laughs> anyway, I got to close it down. I hope you guys are having a good time. Like, share, subscribe, send it around. Uh, I'm, I'm this close to getting 70 subscribers. If you're one of these people, if you made it this far, friend, and you're not subscribed, subscribe. Because I, this is the way I talk, and you're going to hear more of me. And if you can stand this for a half hour, <laughs> you can stand more. All right. I love you all. Good luck.